All right, so now we're going to move on to the second video of section 8.3, and that's where we are going to use trigonometric ratios to solve for the side lengths of a triangle. All right, so kind of what we talked about before that if you were given this problem and I asked you to solve for x, you couldn't solve for x using Pythagorean theorem because we only have one on or one known side. And you couldn't solve for x using a special right triangle because it is not a special right triangle. So we are going to now apply these trigonometric ratios that we learned in the last video to help us solve for missing sides like this x here. All right, so before we do that, I just want to go over uh, one quick thing to show you how we're using this. So we've already learned this triangle here, and this is a special right triangle. We know it is a 30, 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Right now, if I ask for you to solve for our sine of angle A, we know we have our SOHCAHTOA. You highlight angle A. That means our opposite would be this 4. Our, our adjacent leg would be this 4 root 3. And our hypotenuse is, of course, this 8 because it's opposite of a right angle. So if we were to do our sine, it would be sine of angle A is equal to opposite 4 over hypotenuse 8, which then means sine of angle A in this case will be equal to 1 half. Well, we know what the angle is here for sine. It's 30 degrees. So in your calculator, if you write sine of 30, it will give you 0.5 or 1 half as your answer. So what this what we talked about in the last video is that it creates all these trigonometric ratios because all of these right triangles are similar. Um, we are now able to solve for a missing side if we know one of the angle measurements. And then we can use it to solve for problems because this sine of 30 degrees tells us what our trigonometric ratio will be equal to, one half. And we can use that to solve for the unknown. Right? So if we didn't know what our hypotenuse is. We could then solve for using this here, sine of 30 is equal to 1 half, to then solve for our hypotenuse. All right? So these sine, cosine tangents that we're using, especially when we plug in their degrees, whether if it's sine of 60 or whatever, um, we know that this will give us a ratio that will hold true for all of our triangles because they are all similar because of angle angle. All right, so now we're going to use this. Uh, to solve for a question, right? So we're asked to solve for FD. So we want to solve for this here, so I'll label it X. We can't solve this based on what, we've know, what we know so far. One, it's not a special right triangle. Two, we only have one given side to us, so we can't use Pythagorean theorem. But what we can do now, based on our trigonometry, is we can go ahead and we'll highlight this angle F. Then we'll label all the sides. This is our opposite side. This is our adjacent side, and this is our hypotenuse, because it's opposite of 90 degrees. So now what we'll do is we need to identify which one we have to use. Is it sine, is it cosine, or is it tangent? So we write out the Sokotoa. Well, from this angle F, we want to solve for our hypotenuse, because we want to solve for FD. So that means right away, I know it will not be my tangent. Because my tangent is my opposite, my adjacent, and we want to solve for our hypotenuse. So the tangent has nothing to do with the hypotenuse. So now it's between our sine and our cosine. But since we don't know what our opposite is, we can't use our sine because that won't do us any good because we don't know our opposite or our hypotenuse. So we will not use our sine. That means we will use our cosine. So it is cosine of angle F is equal to our adjacent over our hypotenuse. Now we will fill in what we know. So cosine of angle F, well angle F is 39 degrees. So we can then say cosine of 39 is equal to our adjacent, which we know is 20, over X. Right Now we will solve for this variable. Before we do this, we will first type in what cosine of 39 is equal to, because cosine of 39, remember, represents a ratio. And that is approximately equal to 0.771. So we can say 0.771 is equal to 20 over x. Now, when you do this, you should always keep this. Don't put 0.71 in your calculator, but use the answer button when you're solving. 
All right, but the way that we'll solve for this is we need to get x out of our denominator, so we'll multiply x to both sides. So we have 0.771x is equal to 20. Then we will divide each side by 0.771. So you'll do 20 divided by 0.771, but remember, you should put 20 divided by your answer after you plug it in. So 20 divided by 0.771, it says round to the nearest hundredth. That means it is approximately, x is approximately 25.74. Right? And since they have meters, we will say 25.74 meters. So there's our hypotenuse. So now, something that we once could not solve, we can use in trigonometry. Right? There are two more examples that we're going to go through, and then we're done with this video. All right, so now let's do this problem. Solve for df. All right, so now we're given this angle D, so we will highlight this angle D. We'll write in our opposite, our adjacent, and our hypotenuse. So once again, we have our SOHCAHTOA. We know that it will not be our tangent again because we're trying to solve for our hypotenuse and tangent doesn't include that. Here we don't know what our adjacent is, so then we will go ahead and that means we cannot use cosine either because that means we need our adjacent. So that means here we are going to have to use our sine. So we'll set it up. Sine of angle D is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse. So sine of angle D, so that means sine of 51 is equal to 17, our opposite over X, what we're trying to solve for. First thing we'll do is we'll find sine of 51 and that is equal to 0.777. So then we'll multiply each side by x, move x out of our denominator, so it's 0.777x is equal to 17. Divide each side by 0.777. Remember, what you will type in your calculator, though, is 17 divided by your answer, so that way we're not rounding this number out, and that will give us approximately, x is equal to approximately 21.87. Meters. All right, so that is our answer. That's using our trigonometry to solve. All right, so there's one more question we're going to do, which is a little bit more of a real world application. All right, so here it says in 1990, the Leaning Tower of Pisa was closed to the public due to safety concerns. The tower reopened in 2001 after a 10 year project to reduce its tilt from a vertical or from vertical. Engineers' efforts were successful and resulted in a tilt of 5 degrees, reduced from 5.5 degrees. Suppose someone drops an object from the tower at a height of 150 feet. How far from the base of the tower would the object land? So that means we're highlighting this angle and we know it's five degrees. So we will highlight that angle. That means this is our opposite. This one is our adjacent. And here's our hypotenuse. All right, so for this problem, we have our SOHCAHTOA. What we want to solve for here is we want to solve for how far it falls from the base. So we want to solve for our opposite. So that means we can go ahead and we can cross out our cosine because it doesn't have anything to do with our opposite. And since we don't know what our hypotenuse is, we can cross out cos or sine, and that means we have to use tangent. So then it's tangent of 5 is equal to our opposite, which we don't know, x over our adjacent, which is 150. So when we plug in tangent into our calculator, tangent of 5, and that means it's 0 0.087 is equal to x over 150. And now we can quickly solve for x in this case by just multiplying each side by 150. And remember, when you type this into your calculator, you really should be putting answer instead of 0.87. So 150 times your answer will then give us 13.12. So it says round 10 nearest foot. So that means x will approximately be 13 feet. So it will fall approximately 13 feet um, from the base of the tower. All right, that is it for this video. And there's one more, then we're done with this section.